Love podcast, hate nonsense. It's the Politics Joke Podcast, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Woo. Oh yeah! Cry havoc and let's slip the dogs of war. <laughs> okay. Do the herbs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off! One nil to Spain, baby. <laughs> Fuck off! Fuck off! Oh, yeah. are you being the the goalie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. God, that was a uh, dispiriting way to start my Sunday. That's a good day. <laughs> what watching women doing things? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's obviously what I meant. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, watching England lose. England lose the uh, mm. in the final. It's my favourite pastime. <laughs> <laughs> There's been a lot of that going on recently, actually, for you, sporting wise. Isn't well, there? England losing. Yeah. It's been great. It's been really good stuff. I got asked the weirdest question on something else the other day, which was like, should Scotland and Northern Ireland just, just forget about everything for one weekend and get behind them? And I was like, I don't think I'm the best person to answer this. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, some I was surprised, actually, because uh, on LBC this weekend, I spoke about this. The mm. amount of Welsh people, Irish people and Scottish people who are like, I am supporting the Lionesses this weekend. I was very surprised by yeah. the, the acrimony that's there usually, what we've just spoken about, of being like, whoever England are playing, that's who I'm supporting. Didn't appear to be there. I think, I think it's a new cultural thing almost because the animosity towards the England men's team is built over you know, 100 years of being dicks. Mm. And so the Lionesses probably came into the, the cultural, cultural consciousness more so when they won the Euros. Mm. And there is, they are very popular, very nice, very well-meaning, and very good, at, very good at football as well. And so there is that, like, there isn't really much to dislike about them. But then you've got really chiffy, bitter people like me, <laughs> <laughs> just will militantly oppose Do any you know, like happiness. a so solidarity and oppression or something like that. It's like, oh, yeah. Mm. Someone said, one, one of my friend who is Scottish said to me something about, like, gender over nationality. They wanted. Yeah, someone said that on the radio. Yeah. But yeah. you can all unite and hate the English man, can't you? That's the, like, one thing but you all have but in common. the English man oppresses us as a whole. Yeah, that, that's, no, that's the point the I make. Does English woman oppress? <laughs> that's the point I'm making, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's me, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I say, as an equally privileged <laughs> Scottish man. <laughs> um, should we do intros? Should we bother with those? We've we're, we're, we're started. You know who we are. <laughs> <laughs> My name and those bright lights, baby. Uh, Golden Boimer, Ed Campbell. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Capital J journalist. Hi. Hi. What did you do this weekend, Dad? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I cleaned my bathroom. The listeners don't know that yet. Were you topless? I was topless. But for the listeners, we recorded Wednesday's episode before this. We already mm. talked about me cleaning my bathroom. Mm. Mm. So, so for, let's do it again? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well just to give them context. Yeah. You, you can hear more about that on Wednesday's episode. How disgusting was it before? Not like, not like minging. It was just like needed I a have you down. scrub. I have you down as a man who presents very well publicly. Mm -hmm. But like, and Ava probably will have more knowledge about this than necessarily I will because I'm very clean. Why friendly. will I have a knowledge about no, this? No, just like, you know how, <laughs> you know how there are certain blokes who you, you meet and you're like, you seem like you're able to take care of yourself mm -hmm. and have like decent personal hygiene. Oh. And then you will go to their flat for a party mm -hmm. or for any other reason. And like, there's like 300 empty bog rolls just like scattered across the bathroom floor, mm. the toothbrush. It's like the bristles are in the plug hole. <laughs> there's, there's, there's like black mold on all of the grout in no, the shower. No, Ollie, I think you seem like a pig. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think you seem like a pig. So how much cleaning did your bathroom require? Like, it's a scrub, basically. It's like, what, like a deep clean. It wasn't like minging. How like, many men use it? A, well, my, one of my flatmates has an ensuite. So two of us shower in it. Mm. But... Together. It's like the yeah. yeah, sorry. Yeah, nice. Same, same water. Same water. Yeah, you'll hear more about that on Wednesday's episode. <laughs> but yeah. um, three men use it for pissing and shitting. <laughs> <laughs> and two men use it for cleaning themselves after the pissing and shitting. Wait, <laughs> so mate, matey, boy, <laughs> matey boy in the ensuite. Yeah. He doesn't go to the toilet in his ensuite. No, he, he must, he must do. But imagine, so it's like, so my flat's on two levels. What was, so what I to, I'm just going to describe what my, my flat laid out. Right, here, downstairs, kitchen. Can you draw a floor plan for yeah. us while you're doing this? You can show it to the camera at the end. Okay. Yeah. So that's floor one. Yeah, right. And, then, and which are each of these rooms? Right. So my bedroom. Yeah. Kitchen. Mm. Bathroom. Mm. That's a huge bathroom. It's, it's not that big. Sorry, hall 
Right, Hall and yeah, bathroom. Okay, fine, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, you'd have to go through the bathroom to the kitchen and the living room. That would be mental. Yeah. Making, <laughs> making out with each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then, when you go up the stairs, there's a bed. There's a bedroom above the kitchen. There's a bedroom with an ensuite above my bedroom. Mm. So fascinating. If, if flatmate is in the kitchen, it's he can. He doesn't need to go up the stairs to piss or shit or kiss <laughs> <laughs> to, to use his own bathroom. Does he have a girlfriend? Uh, no, but that's because he's gay. Does okay, he have a boyfriend? Well, now that's going to sound like <laughs> fucking dreadful, isn't it? Uh, like, no, he doesn't have a boyfriend either. Because I thought maybe that might be a factor in it. Can I he tell do a really inappropriate story about pissing, shitting and kissing? Please. <laughs> <laughs> On my honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> an unnamed friend of mine. And this is just, it's not me, it is a friend. Um, goes out, pulls, one night stand, goes home. Big night out though, and that's crucial. Um, the delightful lady that has agreed to engage in sexual relations with him says, shall we do it in the shower? And he's like, yeah, let's do it in the shower. There's also a toilet in the bathroom, right? Anyway, so they get, they, they get going. He starts to feel nauseous. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> he gets out of the shower to be sick in the toilet. He starts being sick in the toilet. Uh, whilst he's being sick, and you know you sort of get that gut-wrenching, mm -hmm. that heaving. Uh, he thinks no. he needs to fart. No. <laughs> no. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Start shitting whilst being <laughs> sick. <laughs> As he's bent over the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he, he composes himself, pulls himself together, <laughs> turns to his lover in the shower, and she's just watching, fingering us. Be <laughs> like, <laughs> shall we carry on? <laughs> That's not true. One hundred percent true. That is absolutely one hundred percent true. I'll get him to voice note me after this and I'll play it to you. That is no. fucking awful. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That is... <sighs> but what I would say, one of the probably all-time great stories. Yeah. In yeah. the Hall of Fame, I would say. It made me cry. Right, <laughs> 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 <That's> water <laughs> That is... <laughs> I suppose that's like, just like, is that fate? Are they still together? No. But you, you think like after like a synergy like that, like you find the one man who's prepared to indulge your shitting and being, and being <laughs> sick fetish no 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 sorry no no it wasn't a fetish no, no, no. she didn't have a fetish she was just she, she was just she was just keeping the show on the road that when, is when, not, when he was ready you know we'll finish things off yeah it wasn't that like is, I'm into this that is not where is she now prison oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. any other stories um, about my flat layout or <laughs> I don't have a living room. I love the um, the confidence of a young man that you can draw out your flat plan like that because if I did that, it would basically just be like a blueprint of what entrances you can get into. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I leave my key in here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the front door's never locked. Yeah. Speaking of, how about the football? Um, <laughs> you watched the game then? Yes. Yeah, I and did. you enjoyed watching England lose? No? Yeah, as per. You did? I, I saw during the Euros. I went to Brighton to watch the Lionesses versus Spain, so in a uh, prequel to this final. And my flatmate said, or my flatmate at the time, the different flatmate entirely. Don't you should, should draw a layout of that? that as well. <laughs> <laughs> but um, my flatmate at and the where time. Where did he sleep? <laughs> my flatmate at the time said, he, re he about 30 minutes into the game, he suddenly realised I didn't want England to win, so really regretted inviting me. <laughs> <laughs> did you, were you, turn up, you, you turned up and you were bitter? I wasn't bit, so it's one of these things like if you live in England, as a, it's just like don't be a dick. Like I watched when I watched the Euros, the men's Euros final that England lost. I wasn't I was at a party with English people, so I was pleased that England lost, but I wasn't like whipping and cheering. I, was, I don't believe that about I wasn't. you. There's, there's multiple witnesses. I bet I bet you would have sat there with a really like sneaky little look on your oh, face absolutely. that would have yeah, been really me, punchable. Me and, you know, me and <laughs> like, the other Scottish person there. Had a just like shaking hands in the corner. Genuinely, like behind a sofa. Good like, game. <laughs> and then... Um, and then you were kissing and shitting. And then, and, then, and then we kissed and chat. Yeah. <laughs> As is tradition in Scotland. <laughs> and when you celebrate the triumph of the Italians over the English. Um, no, but, but I think it was like... Obviously, What's the critical mass? How many Scots do you need to feel safe enough and secure enough to celebrate England losing at a party like, like that? 50-50? 50% Scots mm, to English? 
A third? In, in a, probably majority, because otherwise it seems like you're just like rubbing it in people's faces and people would not react well. Mm. Whereas if you're in a Scottish environment, a Caledonian environment, then there was like, apparently people in, <laughs> apparently people in Edinburgh were like blasting their horns <laughs> <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> Which I think is quite... It also, we I guess it depends them. what kind of English people are at the party, right? Because if like Derek Chisora is there, you're not going to make a big fuss, right? But like, <laughs> <laughs> that, being, like that like archetype of English man, <laughs> Derek Chisora, yeah. he's, actually, <laughs> he's actually one of our biggest advocates for the women's game, Derek. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I think it's like it's good. It obviously just shows how much it's come on. We're like we're at, we're talking about a women's World Cup final, in which we wouldn't have probably done two or three mm. years ago. Yeah, and there's people in in Glasgow. There was people queuing out the door of a pub to watch England lose. To watch England lose, but it was a women's World Cup final. I think it's like it's sick that there's this much. This goes <sighs> See, that's where it. that's where it gets on my nerves a little bit. I'm really well, sorry, Ed. Well, I'm sorry. Well, that, I don't want to fall out with you, but please I mean, do. This would be great content. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Have um, the argument. No, I I don't. Right now, I can't say anything because it's just going to sound like I'm responding to you, which I am. Yeah, but. Um, I just, I, I think that that kind of like, oh, I'm so glad it's the women's and I'm so glad it's, you know, the girls are doing so well. I, ju I just find it so patronising because I think, well, they're playing football. They're not like, you know, dogs jumping through hoops. And I, I don't know. I just don't really think that we're going to reach a good point of equity until we see the game as the game of football rather than the game of women's football. But is it not important to recognise that like there was, that there is a chasm in like support in attention and that that is being surmounted but i think that the 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 narrative then goes to oh but well done for the well done to the girls rather than hey like why 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 don't we watch this why do all the sponsors flock to the men's game like why are we so obsessed with it that way you know mm. rather than it kind of okay right so taking you out of the equation okay, entirely <laughs> so, you can, <laughs> so you can go and kiss and shit and piss over there <laughs> um Rishi Sunak put out a letter this weekend and in which he was like, I'm so excited. This is so inspiring for my daughters, which on the face of it is a nice letter, except it's not because basically what he's feeding into is this, this thing that men can only really understand women or get behind them or care about them if they have their own vested interests. So they can only understand something that women are doing if it's through the lens of I have a sister or a daughter or a mother and I just find it just deeply unhelpful for the entire movement. It's like when we talk, okay, I'm going from football to rape. That's where I'm going. When we talk about sexual assault or anything like that, loads of men will come out and they'll go, well, I wouldn't want this happening to my sister, so I'm going to fight against it. And it's like, okay, but what about the fact that they're also a person? I just don't want this happening to another person. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think about the football. Can you not just enjoy it for the sport that it is? If, um, to be pragmatic for a second, if we accept that uh, a lot of people are sexist, that women face a high degree of prejudice and also discrimination based on that prejudice, whilst it is suboptimal that men are not able to engage with women and women's rights without using the lens of wife, sister, mother, do we say... Okay, that's not great, but at least they are engaging. At least they're trying to. No. Okay, why? I, I, I think that it makes you um, second class to men. I think it, it's creating a difference that I don't think needs to exist. Mm. I think it's like you either enjoy watching football or you don't, and no one is making you do it, and no one is making you have a political opinion on it. You can just... <laughs> It's for fun, mm. right? It, it's for our consumption and mm. for fun. You don't need to to lay your heavy political opinions on it. I don't know. I just think it comes across with that like quite... It, the patronising tone I just felt was all over Twitter, which was like, oh, my daughters are watching this in front of the television and I've never been so proud to watch these girls do so well. It's like when you're watching the men's game, you never say, oh, my little boy could grow up and do this eventually. Your little boy's already in football camp. Your little boy's already playing football mm. every single week. So why is there such a marked difference in your mind when it comes to women? I don't get it. Mm. Mm. Sorry about that. No, really no, it's, no, it's really interesting. It's, making, it's giving me pause for thought, to be honest with you. It's making me think, because that is one of the key things that people have been saying about the tournament, right? Is that it's, you know, inspiring the next generation of footballers that, um, that they're so proud to see 
these women going on and doing so well and having uh, you know something that their children can look up to. And I've never, I hadn't really thought about it in the terms that you're describing. Mm. Well, we've never had to inspire children to want to play football. They do want to play football. We just have to convince men who fund local uh, community practices or fund local schools that actually it's worth putting your money into f women's football. Mm. You know, those are the people we're convincing, not the children who want to play it. Yeah, and somewhat depressingly, uh, we, we're making a big deal about um, Prince William didn't go, right? Prince William mm. didn't fly to Australia to watch the final and he's the president of the FA. So you're kind of sitting there going, oh, why, why is the president of the FA not at the first World Cup final England have participated in since 1966? President of the Spanish FA was there on stage and he fucking grabbed that player by the face and kissed her on the lips yeah. at the trophy fucking collection thing. Yeah, and no shit. No shit and piss. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, they might, they might have done that to him. <laughs> he looked at me so concerned. <laughs> I, I, was like, I, thought, I thought you meant like no shit as in like, I don't know. Maybe we can, I don't, yeah, I thought you were going, no shit. Yeah, he did kiss her. I was like, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No. I don't think that's normal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, or that Ed actually was also on the pitch kissing all of the female <laughs> <laughs> Pissing and shitting everywhere. <laughs> Someone get him out of here! <laughs> Showing everyone his floor pan. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and apparently he went into the changing room after the game as well and was like, we're paying for you all to go on holiday to Ibiza where I will, where I will marry Jennifer, which what? is the player he kissed. Yeah. Oh really? Mm. She apparently she said afterwards she walked, she said it wasn't it wasn't nice, but then she walked it back and said it was a like a warm embrace between two friends. Yeah, so I which, saw she on Instagram Live, they're all on Instagram Live, right? Mm -hmm. TikTok Live in the changing room afterwards. And someone asked her and said, you know, what was that about? And she was like, Yeah, I didn't like that. And I think she said the same on TV. Then after that, the Spanish FA starts circulating a statement. Allegedly, oh, really? on, allegedly on her behalf being like you know, okay. it's an emotional moment and we're embracing the embracing because you know we just won the World Cup mm. I have questions about whether or not she did actually say that um, yeah. particularly because it, it, despite the criticisms that we've just we've just made and talking about the game here the Lionesses are much further on in terms of their sort of uh, battle for gender equality than the Spanish female team is so day before the final all of the back pages not a single one leads with the fact that they're about to play in the World Cup final. It's all sort of like La Liga club games and stuff. Really? Yeah. There was actually a bit of a um, player's revolt as well amongst mm. that squad against the coach. Um, they all said, we're not going to play for him. Not, they said that he was ab not like um, physically abusive, but like mentally and emotionally was sort of like manipulating them and they didn't want to play for him. So a lot of like big star players dropped out. Uh, the Spanish FA appointed uh, an intermediary a woman uh, to, to mediate between the psycho and the squad uh, and then just kept him on and they came back and played for him. So there's like, there's an ongoing dispute between the female players and the Spanish FA. And so for him to then, you know, plant a big wet one on one of their faces in front of the world's cameras, like as well, the psychology of that, I think is really interesting, right? Because mm, yeah. it's like the biggest moment of her career, probably possibly of her life. She's just won the World Cup. Mm. And the world is watching, or at least a city from part of the world is watching. All the, all the cameras pointed at you, and then he like grabs you by the face yeah. and kisses you, and you're like, "Well, what the hell do I do?" I'm telling you, there is not one moment in time that a man can't somehow usurp himself into it. Like they always just have to make themselves front and center and make it all about them. Yeah. What, Sorry. No, Marina Hyde wrote something similar. Uh, she shit really. Yeah. That's yeah. So <laughs> fucking hot. <laughs> <laughs> no, she wrote something about. Um, Mason Greenwood, right? She wrote it a lot better, of course. But <laughs> <laughs> no, she said something about like how useless men will never cease in their ability to like suck the limelight away. So, you know, because this stuff with Mason Greenwood's been happening and man, you have said that the, one of the reasons they haven't made a decision on it yet is because they want to consult with the women's team. Several of the players are at the World Cup playing for England. Katie Zellum uh, being one, for example, uh, Ella Toon as well, I think, and others. So they couldn't make a decision because they had to talk to the players. They're in Australia. They can't exactly phone them up and be like, by the way, what do you think about this? Because mm. they've got the small matter of trying to win a World Cup on their hands. Uh, so because of that, on the those players' Instagrams, every single post they've been doing is like freak man new fans being like, yeah. you've got to get Greenwood back in the team. You've got to get mm. Greenwood back in the team. And Marina's column, she was talking about Infantino as well because he said something mental again. Um, 
but was just like, don't underestimate a man's ability to suck all of the limelight and oxygen out of a room and make it all about them, no matter how useless uh, and terrible they are, which was yeah. a good piece. Mm. Well, she's always doing good pieces, isn't she? Yeah, she does. There is something fascinating about the Premier League, though, and the, the, the lengths that football fans will go to defend them. I mean, like... It's insane. It, it yeah. is absolutely insane. It's like, guys, please have some sex. Just just <laughs> do something else. Do something else for one minute. Um, can. They're travelling up and down the country on buses, piss, pissing, shitting, kissing other men. Yeah. <laughs> but what is that? Why... What... Why is it that there is such a high profile of potential sexual assaults or sexual harassment that allegedly happens around the Premier League? Like, what is that? Is it because we've over-sponsored them or over, you know, filled their pockets a little bit too large? Or what? what, what is that? I think uh, quite a lot of it has to do with the fact that in the modern era, these players become incredibly famous and incredibly wealthy at an increasingly younger age. Mm. So, not, and it's not the case for every player, right? But for a lot of them, they'll be in and around professional setups from the age of 16, 17, 18. And yeah, maybe, okay, their first team debut might come later. But already you're distinguished from uh, your school peers. Mm. You're distinguished from pretty much everyone you know because you're already, a, even if you're on like a pretty small time academy contract, um, you're already earning most of more than what most of your mates are earning. It's that thing, right, about uh, celebrities and Macaulay Culkin is the example that's always given, but others that essentially that celebrities don't mentally develop beyond the age at which they become famous. Mm. Because at that point, you're no longer engaging with the world in the way that other human beings do. You're not learning because you're surrounded by security, mm. your agent, your manager. You don't have to make, you can outsource decision making, you outsource risk. And so as a result of that, you don't personally develop anymore. I think there's a little bit of that going on with football players who become insanely wealthy and insanely famous at a very, very young age and then don't mentally develop any further, don't also engage with society in a normal way. Yeah, you're not socialised. Yeah. You don't, like, Trent Alexander-Arnold talked about he didn't have a normal, like, like high school life. He said he never went to any parties because he had he was in the Liverpool Academy. He was, like, his whole, his whole being from the age of about, say, eight upwards was becoming a professional footballer for Liverpool. And so you don't have control, like you're, you're not, that happens to, so, to such few people and the only people you're interacting with on like a daily basis or, or, or on any basis really are other young boys who are also being socialised for that one purpose and the adults around you who are trying to force you, like to make you a professional footballer for, for like their benefit. Mm. So I think at that point kind of your life and socialisation isn't for your own human development or your own human Goodness, I suppose. But then why does it work then so well with like community boxing or like, you know, bo boxers, mm. they're in the gym all the time and that disciplines them and gets their mental health, you know, spick and span. But then for some reason, if you're training for football, it's like, oh, no, put your dick in anything. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, I was just thinking, listening to Ed talk then as well. I was like, you did just ask us why there are so many sort of like <laughs> uh, rapists and people guilty of sexual assault in the Premier League. And we were like, well... Here's an explanation. Like we've, 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 we've just excused all of that atrocious behaviour. It's not. It's not, it's no, not, know, it, not. It's not their fault. They don't yeah. choose to do it. But they're just so rich. It's not their fault. I don't know. I used to they spend, were rich um, eight year olds. I used to spend a bit of time around one of them when my housemate was dating one of them. Mm. We'll keep this really loose. Yeah, <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Um, he used to park on the red route outside of our flat. Like he had this Range Rover that was like. Do you know when a Range Rover has just been customised to the point where you're like. That looks like an illegal vehicle. <laughs> you used to just park it anymore. on the red route and then yeah, yeah. get a ticket, no bother, pay for it or whatever. Mm. And then she always used to say about the footballers that they had their that their brain was in their foot. <laughs> so like they couldn't communicate normally or hold a normal conversation <laughs> because their brain was in their foot. I'm gonna get so much crap for this. Anyway, so much so that like genuinely having conversations with him in and around the flat was an absolute struggle. Really? <laughs> like, I, I don't know what it was with him. Like, one day he came in and he'd, he'd just come off of a TV station where he'd been doing a little bit of commentary. That might be narrowing it down a little bit anyway. Um, mm. and, um, There's enough, don't worry. I'll, yeah. I'll, we'll let you know if you get too dangerous. You guys. <laughs> anyway, no, still broad. He came in and I was like, oh, that was good. Did you enjoy that? And he was like, what? And I was like, you, you've just been on TV. He's like, have I? When did I do that? And I was like, like two hours oh ago, mate. God. Like, what What on earth? They're honestly just... just 
ahead of the ball too much. <laughs> brain in the foot. They do say that about um, CTE, right? You know, yeah. like long-term brain injury is that actually it's far worse to have repeated low-level impacts, i.e. like heading the ball over and over and over again. That's actually worse than like getting knocked clean out. Really? Yeah. Um, yeah. There was do. a study with him, I think Scottish footballers, about like Scottish footballers who just developed dementia later in life. And I think they found there was a correlation between... I think it's one of the things as well with... Um, in American football, right? Because they've got all the, oh, yeah. the pads and the armour. So they never really... Uh, obviously, it does happen. But in terms of like, getting knocked clean out, it doesn't happen as much because they're protected. So you know they can, they can do all the stuff they do and not knock themselves out. And they think that might actually be worse for them that if they didn't have the pads and they were more susceptible, they wouldn't hit each other as hard. Yeah, they're more reckless. Forth. I think it's more like yeah. they hit each other harder because they've got this big helmet. It's like, oh, this won't hurt. But your brain's like being like, hit by a car multiple times in a NFL game. What could go wrong? Yeah. Ow. <laughs> Owie. Owie. Uh, anything else to say about the lionesses? Um, no. Well, yeah, it's a given. Didn't have anything to say about them before. I mean, <laughs> good good, good riddance. <laughs> <laughs> I had plenty to say. Yeah. Johnny Vaughan's been talking about women's football for like five or six years. You know Johnny Vaughan? Yeah, I know yeah. Johnny Vaughan, yeah. Um, Not I've, personally, but yeah. I'm aware of, yes, I don't understand what you're talking the about. The king of masculine energy, I would say. Um <laughs> Is, He's it, got a th- he, is it to those women three? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, I think he does like a swap. So I think his his normal team is either Chelsea or Arsenal and then his women's team is the other one. So he swaps that's, it. That's wrong. I, that's, that makes his skin crawl. Really? Yeah. Why? I think it's, I think it's weird. I think you should support like... One club till I die. I think, yeah. I think it's a normal... Like, you don't support like the other teams under 16s. Wait. Wait, our favourite ever commentator made such a good point the other week. Our favourite man from GB News. Who? Ben Leo. Oh, great. (laughs) What did he say? Ben Leo compared the women's team to the under-16 boys team. It took everything in me not to say you're watching a lot of the under-16s, are you, mate? (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) Ben Leo is, of course, welcome on this podcast anytime he wants. Yeah. He'll probably probably storm through the door in a minute. (laughs) You think you're clever, do you? Yeah. <laughs> Making content, yeah? You're smart. <laughs> I'm going to leave that there. That's good. I'm not going to riff on that any further. Lucy Letby has just been sentenced to whole life term. Yeah. No, she'll never see the light of day again. She's no parole. She's going down. Um, what do we think about that? Good. <sighs> Tough question, that isn't it? I think. No. Shall I? Shall I go first? I think. I think. I think. Mr. Should we hang her? <laughs> um, no. It this was obviously the this is off the back of that, like, yeah, that becoming a really big conversation over the weekend. Yeah. Should we hang her? Mm. It's Desmond Tutu, isn't it, who says that you shouldn't have capital punishment because you can quote this better than me if you like, because that beca- then it becomes an act of revenge rather than an act of retribution. Is that not right? I don't know the quote. I'm sure Tutu says something mm-hmm. like that. It sounds like a sort of Maybe eloquent and insightful make up a quote, thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tutu wasn't said, hang it, the bitch. Wasn't it Mother Teresa who once <laughs> said? <laughs> I don't know. I First first off, anti-death penalty mm-hmm. for the obvious reason. Mm-hmm. The justice system get th- gets things wrong, right? Mm-hmm. We, we, we convict people for crimes they didn't commit. And the thing about doing that and then killing someone is... Can't take it back. You well, it's apologize. funny because, like, mm. what two weeks ago, Andrew Mulkinson walked through for the first time mm. in what, like, twenty years. He was inside for seventeen years. Mm. He didn't do anything wrong. He was nowhere near it. Mm. He would be dead. Yeah. Yeah. No. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So that's the big caveat. That's that's the first thing. The the, the conversation we're about to have about this. I don't think we ever, we'll ever have the death penalty. I don't think we should ever have the death penalty. Mm. If we were to have the death penalty, surely it's for cases like this. Like, if you were to ever do it, if you were to ever advocate for it, it would be for someone that's killed, like, fucking seven babies, surely. But I thought you made a really good point earlier, Mm. before we came on to record, which was that she's going to have such a hell of a ride inside prison. Oh, yeah, you're damn right there. You know. Yeah, I think, um, well, right, there'll be plenty of mothers, right, in prison with her who either don't have access to their children because they're in prison, have had their children taken away from them, um, social services, or by their partners, whatever, and I suspect quite a few of those women are going to have a problem yeah. with let be having killed at least seven babies. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're going to have quite a big problem with that. Even even that, do you think 
when people talk about when like pedophiles go to prison or like sex criminals go to prison and people say, oh, they'll have like a Torres time inside. They've been sentenced to prison, like a, a prison sentence. They haven't been sentenced to attacks from fellow inmates. It's, yeah. it's, it's an extra, it's an, like an, another, it's an extra ju- judicial punishment. Yeah, for and, sure. And I think there is like a sentiment that is like, oh yeah, get get our girls, like whatever. But I think, I don't know, it's, it seems, it seems, is there a disconnect between the being anti-death penalty and being pro other prisoners beating up? Yeah, sorry, I'm not. No, and I, I know you're, I, I know I'm, I'm, it's not a criticism of you personally, but there is like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go on, girls. Get him. It's really inspiring for the next generation. <laughs> <laughs> so glad my daughter gets to watch this. Yeah. <laughs> um. Um. Uh, no, for sure, right? Cause I, was, I was having this conversation um, uh, on Saturday with someone, uh, with Roche, actually, who's been on the podcast, and we were talking about whether or not we think prison actually in any way, like, stops the... Cr- stops like helps the person, the person who's committed the crime, mm-hmm. do you think sending them to prison either stops them from doing crime again, uh, improves their life chances? Like, take, Because that's the hard conversation to have mm. about criminal justice, right? Is, yeah, you might want to put that person into prison. You might want the other inmates to kick the living piss out of her mm. for the rest of her life. You might want all of those things to happen. Does that actually make that person less likely to commit crime in the future? Does it actually do anything other than provide like tickle a slightly base and primal itch that we all have for vengeance. Well, I don't think there'll be a lot of babies in prison. So I think no. that's one way for the crime not to be committed no, no, again. Look, 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 look. And the, um, the, the continuation of that conversation was, I think this is one of the rare instances where, yes, you have to put that person in a box and throw away the key. Yeah. Because otherwise, she w- I'm sure she would, if, if she hadn't been caught, I'm sure she would have continued mm-hmm. defending. I know, it, yeah, it's rehabilitation over retribution, isn't it? That's, yeah. the, that's the question. But you know, like I don't know, someone who's, stolen a car. Yeah. Does putting them in prison mean they won't steal a car again? No, actually, it probably increases the likelihood because their chances of employment are now significantly harmed because they've gone through the criminal justice system. They're probably not going to have many options apart from going back to a life of crime. I don't know if prison is necessarily the answer in for a lot of crimes. I think in this case, it absolutely is. But it's the danger to society thing, isn't it? Because you remember when John Warboys was up for parole yeah. and everyone was like, oh, what do you mean? Like the, mm-hmm. the black cab rapist, why on earth is he being let out onto the streets? Like mm-hmm. we don't want him in normal society. I mean, like in a kind of like, is that why they shipped them all to Australia back in the day? Because they <laughs> well, were like, we it. can't keep you in here any longer, but we don't quite want you here. Excuse me. Was it, I thought that was the prison, wasn't it? Sure, it was the prison. It wasn't like for rehabilitation purposes penal colony yeah yeah so i suppose was it was also were prisons overcrowded was that something to do with they're it? pretty overcrowded now i yeah. think no yeah. i think it was um i think it was not our problem anymore yeah it was like it's true it's problem not well yeah not even it was like you go over there you, you live in australia now you know you set up, set up a colony god they get there and they're like oh no it's so hot and nice <laughs> and oh <laughs> Oh, I don't live in a shack in London. Like, no, no one's throwing their piss on me. <laughs> and they keep kissing me afterwards. I don't <laughs> me wearing a hat with a cork shirt. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Welcome to your daily kissing. <laughs> oh, stop that. Um... Yeah, I don't really that that I, I don't really understand why that was the first leap over the weekend. Mm. The second that we found out about it, everyone just suddenly was like, "Hang her!" There is something quite primal about that, isn't there? Yeah, well, it's, it's, most of the polling suggests that a majority of the British public support the return of the death penalty. Yeah, okay, fine, but also there is no evidence that it acts as a deterrent. And yeah. the biggest proponent of that was Pretty Patel. She was. She just put in that famous Ian Hislop and Pretty Patel clip because yeah. it's so good. Yeah, drop it. Roll the clip. Drop it like it's hot. For 50 years, Private Eye has pretty much, in most issues, exposed a miscarriage of justice, and a lot of them have been murders. Over the years, large numbers of these cases have been found to be entirely wrong, um, and the men convicted... Um, almost all of men, there's a couple of women, have been found innocent. Um, so we would have killed those people, and in some of those very high-profile cases which involve terrorism cases, we would have made very dangerous new martyrs by executing people who turned out not 
to have committed the murders involved. So on a purely practical basis, whatever you think it says about um, the civilised nature of your society or not, I think it would be incredibly dangerous to have capital punishment back. Are you, are you, influenced, are you influenced at all by that argument of um, no miscarriages of justice? No disrespect, Ian, but I'm not. Um, on the basis that I think, you know, this, this is really about our criminal justice system, actually. And I think if any, you know, for any conviction, for example, you need ultimate burden of proof. You really do, and that means that... But that's his point, that they, that they find these mistakes all the time. Well, I mean, that's... Are you saying they, they were guilty, all these people? No, I'm not saying they were guilty. Obviously, I'm not. So not they would be cases. dead? No, the point... They would? Well, the point is, as I said earlier on, this is about having deterrence. You know, if you have strong deterrence, like that It's not a deterrent, well. killing the wrong people. Well, no, <laughs> capital punishment would act as a deterrent. You were, your voice was lost. The, in the point that I'm making is that to have capital punishment, that would act as a deterrent, and that is, that is the first point here. The second issue is, this is actually about our criminal justice system doing what it says on the tin. So you have to, you know, before anybody is sentenced, they've got to have full proof. They really has. You know, in the case of Troy Davis in America as well, you know, that was a case that went to court. They were convinced they had full burden of proof there. They really were. Now, that's a matter for them. But in any case in this country, if capital punishment was on the, on the statute books, for example, you'd need to have complete and utter burden of proof. But you just have it in these just, cases. Justin, Justin. And I, I'm, I'm interested to know whether there's any evidence that it is, in fact, a deterrent. There whether is evidence that it isn't. Um, that, that would be my one point. Other than that, I completely agree with Harriet and with Ian. I, I'm, I'm sort of with Desmond Tutu on this, who says, uh, if you take a life when a life has been taken, that's revenge, not justice. We've got a lot of, a lot of hands. Yeah, so Pretty Patel there, her only argument for the death penalty is that it acts as a deterrent and there's absolutely no evidence that it does mm. actually in the states that the states with the death penalty have a higher murder rate than the states without mm. it so i also wonder as well you know if you're so uh morally opposed to people killing other people what on earth then is the justification for the state killing people like if you think if you think it is a metaphysical but just mor moral outrage and evil and actually we could have a conversation maybe about whether evil exists or not but if you that's your position if you're going to be like you've killed someone therefore we are going to exact the most horrific punishment on you possible how how does that in any way excuse or justify you then killing the person if, if you have such a problem with people being killed how on earth can you implement it yourself mm -hmm. it feels to me like there's a huge gap in the logic there mm. But then there is a huge gap in the logic with most Christianity, so maybe that's where it comes from, you know? Oh, actually, you know, the Christians said no eye for an eye, isn't it? An eye no, for an, an, eye, it, for an no, eye is, they actually is, said an eye is for an Old eye, Testament, they? isn't it? That's like yeah. fire and fury. Abraham, God. like, going to kill his son and crap, yeah. yeah. You guys know more about God than I do. I don't, you know. Why? I don't know very much about Why? God. Why do you know about God? I don't know. Why do you know about God? Well, you have a, you... Sunday school. I didn't go to church ever. Well, I did. Okay, so, I, so, so you I, definitely know more yeah. about God. I don't. Yeah. I know equally as I think. But only the Catholic. I don't know what that other church that claims to be, you know, <laughs> Church of England or whatever. You don't recognise the Church of England. Well, I don't recognise <laughs> the king, so I don't recognise the church. <laughs> You're one of those guys who like claims like this random Prussian <laughs> is the true is the true no, king of England. I love the idea the, that Ava's only opposition the, Pope. the Pope's the king of England. <laughs> Ava's only opposition to the monarchy is the fact that he's the head of the Church of England, <laughs> which she doesn't recognise as a religion. <laughs> so that's why she's a Republican. Um, no, I, I actually don't. I'm I'm quite agnostic most of the time. Mm. Until the king's involved, then I am then full pope. Full, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's going to be anyone. It should be the pope. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's knockoff. Mm. Catholic yeah. God's representative on earth. Yeah. Oh, married a divorcee? Did you? <laughs> <laughs> do you Do you think she's evil? No. <laughs> I don't know who you meant either. The serial killer. Oh. 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 <laughs> I um, don't think Camilla did anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> She was just the third woman, she was just the well, third person in the would, marriage. Would, would, yeah. uh, would Diana say that? That's what yeah. we need to really be thinking about. Well, she's not here right now, but maybe we should so do a seance where we try, and, we, that. We try and <laughs> uh, encourage Diana yeah, to join the podcast. We've had Britain's sexiest MP. We've done a dominatrix. 
the next logical step. Wait, we step. have not had Britain's sexiest MP. Who Sorry, sexiest heard? politician. Sexiest politician. Who was the sexiest MP? No, no, no. I'm talking about Carl Cashman last week. Oh, he, was, right, he, was, okay. he was starting a hot lip conversation. Oh, you're starting a separate conversation. Yeah. Who is the sexiest MP? Mm. No, we can't be yeah, doing that. Yeah, we can't do that. No. No. Um, natural conclusion. Sexiest politician, dominatrix, seance with Diana. It makes sense. I've actually got a really good medium that we could use. What a nuts thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Yes, I do. No, by definition of being a medium, <laughs> you're, you're not a good medium. <laughs> my mum, my mum's brother died really young, like when he was 18. And um, my mum has gone to this, this same oh. woman ever since. Yeah, you feel bad now, yeah, don't you, Pat? This is the problem. Yeah. <laughs> being this. <laughs> <laughs> this is a problem because nine, right, nine times out of ten, whenever anyone uses a medium, it is because they want to contact someone yeah. that they felt like they didn't have enough time with, close personal death, etc. Mm. And before Ava said the personal connection, I was exactly the same. <laughs> which was, you fucking idiots. There is no such thing as a good medium. And then you go, well, yeah, she wants to come And you go, hmm. Have I, have I Can told, I say that? Have I told you guys my tarot story? No. Depends. Is there a deep family connection? Can we no, take no, the piece no, no, no. Just, great, yeah, tell it. But, um, I don't even know if it was tarot, but basically I was at this... You part. don't even know if it was tarot? It was, you cards. Know. It was cards, like... Did they have pictures on them? Yeah, yes, or like, you it was, know... It was animals, not like goddesses or whatever. But anyway, it was it not a healthy mix of the two. What, you can only do a reading if there's goddesses involved? So like, what do you mean? So anyway, back to my story about tarot that you were so rudely <laughs> interrupted. <laughs> um, the, it was, we were, I, was at this, I was at this ball at university and they had an animal tarot thing and they dealt you five cards and each of the animals represented like something to do with your spirit. Four out of mine, four out of the five of mine were dragons. And we went nuts yeah me and my friend were sitting being like so the guy started talking about like the fifth one was like a salmon or something <laughs> shit <laughs> I feel like that's a better representation he started, of you shut up no I'm four dragons <laughs> <laughs> he said he said he started talking about the salmon and me and my friend we were so drunk we're like, shut up silver dragon what does that mean <laughs> and the black dragon <laughs> so that's so you're looking at a four dragon guy. What did the salmon mean? I, I've got no idea. I wasn't interested. I wasn't remotely interested in what the salmon meant about me. Just each of the individual dragons. Four dragons. Four dragons. Yeah, I, I don't know if that is a tarot. I think in like ancient China, it'd have been king. <laughs> if I'm a four dragon guy. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> because in... Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Any other thoughts? But instead, I'm pissing and shitting in a shower with my family. <laughs> anyway, no, she I does like the do salmon. this. Go on. No, go on. I was going to say the salmon's more your energy, right? Why? Like, expend all of your life force swimming upstream when you could just go downstream. The smart thing to do. Swim upstream, shag once, die immediately. Also, you can yeah. get a bit... <laughs> you're quite pink as well at times. Yes, but I'm also... In... Their, their jaws also grow twice the size, don't they? <laughs> Have you not seen how a salmon changes shape? No. Like when it's swimming upstream, no? No. Then no. prepare to be, have your mind blown. Do salmon fish up, no, swim upstream or downstream? They return to their, where they were spawned to then procreate themselves and then they immediately die. Is that what he'll do then? He'll go back to Glasgow? What? Why are we not talking about the ways in which I'm similar to dragons? You're not similar to a dragon, Ed. <laughs> that's, that's, not why we're not, that's why we're not talking about them. Uh, where is he? He's just, just for the for the listener, Ollie is currently scrolling through loads of pictures of fish. Okay, so this is, it's only a graphic, so it's less representative, but you'll see here. Oh, that's Ed, yeah. Yeah, 100%. Ocean spawning. Is oh, it? look, his jaw is much bigger, isn't yeah, it? His jaw will get twice as big. So that's the, that, that's the same fish, it changes. That actually is kind of similar, because I had races to correct an overbite. <laughs> 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 I saw a tweet. That's where I got it from. So let me pull up that tweet. <laughs> but in many ways, like dragons, um, powerful, can fly. Mm. Typing salmon into Twitter does not yield what I thought it would yield. What's it showing you? Anime. Oh. That's just your anime filter. <laughs> yeah. so I, need to, I need to change that. Okay. I'll try and find this photo. In the meantime, maybe you guys talk about something else. What were we talking about before we talked about? We were talking about Britain's worst child serial killer. <laughs> Yeah. Why are you laughing? Oh, yeah. So anyway, fun fact for you all. I told this to Ollie earlier. The last public hanging in the UK was in 1868, which means you could have taken the tube to it. Whoa. 
Isn't that wild? That is nuts. That's a good fact, that, isn't it? That is good. And then the last private hanging was 1964. Very recent. You could have gone yeah. for a Beatles concert. Yes, you could have. Yes, you could have. Mm. That's that's great, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> what a day. <laughs> Long yeah. day at work. What to face the death sentence rather than going to the Beatles concert? I think maybe if you're the hangman, if you're, was it Pierre Pong? Pierre Point? Was he the. Do you think hangman? you want to go out after you've been doing a private hanging? Take your mind off it. Maybe. I don't even think we're allowed to say it that often, are we? It's <clears> not like loads of rules about saying that word now. What, hanging? Yeah. Why? I don't know. Um, anyway, should we talk about Gillian Keegan? Yeah, I can't find this picture of the salmon, so. Okay, it was well, deeply fucked up. Like, really fucked up. Why don't you type in fucked up salmon then? Because that's not what was in there. And do you find Twitter search is like really, really bad? Yeah. Really bad. You know how other platforms, yeah. they have, you know, like language recognition so that you can type something in and they'll show it to you. Twitter mm -hmm. is like, it, it has to be the exact. Yeah, but that's really helpful at times. That is really Oh, okay. No, helpful. so this is a good, this is a good picture of, so you, you saw the, the graphics, right? Yeah. Of the two. So this is what, that's what they look like right, in real yeah. life. I, I am actually really full of fish. And I'm not making that up. You're, fi you're fish phobic. Phobic of fish. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that was, I think that I was triggered awful. you. <laughs> I mean, look, look at this fucking thing. That is Ed, yeah. It was, I mean, that's, a, a, that's triggering enough, to be fair. You yeah. Is that a salmon? That's a salmon. Yeah, that's yeah. What happened to that salmon? Like. So it's because it's spawning, it's changed. Okay. Oh, so, so it kind of looks like an elephant at the front, like it's got an elephant ear, and then it sort of arches back into a huge hunchback of Notre Dame shape. Yeah, baby got back. Yeah. She can throw that back at the top of the river source when she's spawning. <laughs> um, so they change shape a lot. Anyway, there's another one. Are you all right? Look how humpback it gets. I won't show Ed. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Yeah, damn. Right. Um, she's glistening as well, isn't she? Yeah, she's wet. Can we... Um, <laughs> <laughs> can we talk about your fish phobia? Yeah, if you like. Uh, why? Where's that from? No idea. Completely rational. Hit, hit them. All fish? Um, yes. Uh, no, not, not like... Just fresh water. <laughs> not like goldfish. <laughs> that would be pathetic, Yeah, it? it would be. Yeah. Not fish that are dead. What about big goldfish? Not fish that are dead. I can, like, like, like a fishmonger's. Um, they're fine. And delicious. Yeah. But I also actually don't really like seafood, but it's separate. Separate thing. Okay. Separate thing. We can examine that in um, a moment. I can distinct... I'm not frightened of sea-based mammals. Like whales are fine. <laughs> <laughs> The thing that can kill you is all right, but oh, See, I'm not like I'm not going to get in the water with one. Seal, seal's fine. What about the most fearsome of all fish, the shark? Well, they, well, yeah, scared of those. Yeah, obviously, who's not? But what if it doesn't eat people? Whale shark. Whale shark is also freaky. What about a large tuna? Oh, awful. Really? Oh, that's a, like a big fish. Yeah. Worst nightmare. Yeah, but a whale is a big fish, isn't it? No, it's no, a big it's mammal. mammal. That's the point. Oh, why don't you all? <laughs> it's interesting that psychologically, yeah. you're making <laughs> the distinction <laughs> between the two. Yeah. Oh, what from a like, lizard brain it is. Mm. Fear of it. Is what about all? like um, like a Dover sole? What? It's like a flat fish on the bottom. Oh, no. What about when they bring it like covered in salt? Mm. With what? a little lemon inside it and some parsley. But I, I don't like eating fish either. That's a separate thing. Okay. I don't, I don't love seafood. It's a separate thing. So yeah. you've got Whoa. a fear of fish and you don't like... Th these aren't don't, related. I, no. Right. What about a cute little prawn? Uh, I don't think I've ever seen an alive prawn. Okay, we can arrange for that to happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll find out. Like, so like, if you were like, having prawns at dinner, I wouldn't mind. Lobster. So like when they're with a sauce, it's okay. Uh, not to eat, to look at. To be oh, in the sea awful. with. Dreadful. Awful. What about when you're in like Chinatown and you're like looking at them all in there? Their little in cages. The tanks. Yeah. Is that I, believe, I don't look at them. It uh, used to make me you really upset. Your eyes. Yeah. Out of respect. Out of respect. That's why I, I actually, you noticed that I didn't, I barely looked at yeah, that salmon. Yeah, you glanced and, and you, I, I, there was a physical reaction. Yeah. It was, it was, well, it's not, it's not, it's, it's actually quite avoidable to not see fish in like your day to day life. Well, I don't go, I don't frequent aquariums very often. We should do that. Paul <laughs> Joe at the aquarium. No, no we, we obviously shouldn't do that. <laughs> Paul Joe at the aquarium. But I'm not coming. You can actually go swimming with the sharks at the London. Well, believe it uh, or not, I don't want to do that either. <laughs> yeah, but what if you wanted to like confront your fear? <laughs> I, but I don't. You can, you can touch a stingray. Well, how would you do that? I remember doing that with my dad that's when cute. I was little. Yeah. Touch a little ray? No, let's not do that. They're freaky as hell. Do you know what the worst part? So the, the, the point of the pandemic, like the first lockdown when I realised like I probably wasn't very well, was like <laughs> I used to walk up to from Leicester Square where I was working 
legally, all right? I was a key worker, mm. okay? So before you get on your high horse. <laughs> um, and then I'd walk past Chinatown, it'd be completely empty. And there was like a load of lobster tanks that had been abandoned with the lobsters in them. And Whoa. so every day I basically was going past it, watching them die and Jesus. decay and get worse really? and worse and worse. And then there was one day and I remember it well it was a Wednesday morning and I was coming into work and I just went to go and see the lobster tanks and I just I was hysterically crying all and dead. all dead oh. and apart from one there was one still moving Swan and I was completely dead, inconsolable yeah yeah there's um it's like the Somme there's uh there's <laughs> no it wasn't <laughs> as pro possibly as terrifying as the Somme for you <laughs> I see that many lob, lob, lobsty lobsters. I, th I think it's just lobsters. Yeah. <laughs> it's, just normal, it's just the normal plural. Probably, that probably is, yeah. Yeah, what would you have rather had to do? Run onto the, to the battlefield or be among one large fish? <laughs> what context no, no, no. am I here? Would you rather, would you rather <laughs> go over the top, right. first day of the song, right. or be dropped from a helicopter? You know, they're like hover uh -huh. like relatively low. So you, like, you, yeah. you'll survive. You're just being dropped in. Uh -huh. Middle of the ocean. Right. Huge school of tuna. So, I, I think it's the school of tuna. I think. Well, you, would, you would rather do that. But they're not going to kill me, are they? No, but you are in the middle of the... Like, you will die. I'm, Death is certain in both. Oh, what? Yeah. Why? You're, well, well, was, you're, you're, was, you're was going, over, you're going okay, over the top of the sun. Why song. is Death certain? Yeah, why is Death certain in the sea one? Because well, you're in the middle of the ocean. The helicopter's flying off. It's oh, not, it's not, <laughs> okay. It's not like we're going to um, keep you, you safe. You've changed the parameters of this because now it's either drowning or being shot to death. So that's too. That's yeah, no, that, now that we're well, not, yeah, we're not even on fish I'm anymore. exploring the. I want to see I'd how rather, scared he is of the fish. No, but I'd, ra I'd rather right. be shot because I'd be like. Oh, no, you don't know that's how you're going to die, though, right? Like well, you, could get, you could get like gassed. Yeah, half well, blown up by a shell. Well, the German might have a fish. <laughs> like that's. <laughs> Runs at you with a salmon. <laughs> the Germans are fishing. <laughs> um, it's. I think. Well, the odds are you probably would be shot. Yeah, but you don't know that. No, be I don't quick. know. But like, but either the tuna eat you or you drown at sea, and that'd be awful. I think that's less of a fish thing and more of like a you don't want to drown. Okay, what about thing. being in a jacuzzi with a tuna? <laughs> <laughs> with one sexy tuna. <laughs> yeah. That would be. She's wearing a bikini. That'd be one of the worst things in the world. <laughs> okay, wait. I've got. I've got. I've got really the good champagne. <laughs> You have to, okay, I've got it. I've, I've so got it. You're in a jacuzzi with a large tuna, right? Or, <laughs> a or, large, I don't think there, is a there, large but I young tuna. I don't think there's room. <laughs> All right. The, you're in a jacuzzi with a supple tuna. Yeah. <laughs> there's enough room for the both of you. Or <laughs> you have to go to a Celtics game. <laughs> a Boston Celtics game? Full, no, that is so much fun. No, in full uniform. No. I mean, what's it called? <laughs> What would, costume? What's it called? Would, Kit. Would Kit. you rather? Would you? Would you rather be in the jacuzzi with a large but supple tuna, <laughs> or a young salmon? What is the size difference between a? It's like it's significant, isn't it? It's like, are massive. It's like it. a thousand pounds. <laughs> I think it's like they can get big. It's like well, hundreds of kilograms. I think this is like my like room one one. Yeah, it's like. The fish jacuzzi. <laughs> See, it's like Sophie's choice. Um, this is not like Sophie's choice. Is it? For me, it's my Sophie's choice. Um, <laughs> I think it would be that salmon are smaller, aren't they? Yes. Yeah, that would they, be salmon. You saw the photo. But I wanted to look at it. Why? Well, They're quite it's, nippy salmon. I can, keep my, I keep, can just keep my head over. Yeah, no hands. If a salmon can swim upstream, it would suggest it, it's quite agile. Well, yeah, but. A so, tuna are fucking huge. Wouldn't you rather a docile tuna? No, I don't think, I don't think no, tuna are docile. Because they're huge. Is it, is they're is quite it, powerful. They have table. a lot of experience. Yeah, yeah, no, for they're sure. They're enormous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, there's no room for me in that jacuzzi. Getting <laughs> close and personal. I can relax. <laughs> Impossible. They're hogging all the bubbles. <laughs> You learn something new every day. Yeah. Should we talk about Chile and Keegan? <laughs> yeah, speaking of... No, there's no way that people are still listening to this. I actually think they probably are. <laughs> people have learned quite a lot about me in this episode. <laughs> sure. The layout of my flat. Mm. That I'm mostly dragon. <laughs> <laughs> you can keep saying that. No one's going to believe it. <laughs> that half an hour conversation about salmon. Uh -huh. Oh, well, um, I have witnesses. Okay, we can get my friend Harry on. And Maybe there's something in there, like 
this, you're a salmon, right? And it's like, I don't know, the thing you're most afraid of or the thing that you become or something. There's got to be some kind yeah, of... Yeah, poor dragon. Do you ever play Yu- Yu-Gi-Oh at, at school? Yeah. You know, like, what was it, like Blue Eyes, White Dragon? Mm-hmm. Mm. You didn't... <laughs> <laughs> just, just naming a Yu-Gi-Oh. How old were you when you were doing this? I was, I was about 16, 18. 17, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, Ed was at school. I'm a bit older than him. I was at uni when we, when we, when we did that. Nice. <laughs> That's where we met on like a forum. Do they still do that? Is you guys still going? I don't know. I don't think so. Mm, that's a shame. It was like 15 years ago? No. I used to play RuneScape a lot. Yeah, RuneScape's good. Were you a RuneScape raver? I used to smoke at school, so... In primary school. Oh, that was cool. <laughs> I, 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 I was pissing shitting and making out with boys behind the bike shed. I yeah. did not, actually, at I, all. I didn't piss or shit. I didn't... I never have, never will. <laughs> never touched that a boy while I was at school. Beneath me. Ed's just bared his soul. Yeah. His, his fear of sharing a jacuzzi <laughs> <laughs> with a thousand kilos tuna. Yeah. I think that's... I think, but no one would like that. I would. No, you wouldn't. Yeah, just to tell the story. <laughs> Like, well, think of the experience. You know, if you're like, a, if you're at like sea, to. that tuna is just he's gone. Yeah, but you're not in traps in a jacuzzi. Mm. We talk about Dylan Keegan. I don't think so. Actually, I think we've probably been going for about an hour. Be? I think we could draw the draw the line there. Yeah, trapped in a jacuzzi with a tuna or Gillian Keegan. Tuna, one hundred percent. Are you joking? I think you're underestimating how cool it would be to be no, in a jacuzzi with a full-sized tuna. I think you are massively underestimating how unpleasant it would be to be any animal that's a ton. Like an elephant in a jacuzzi. That's not going to be a fun That'd day. That would be sick! No, Why don't you think the tuna would be frightened of you? I think it would be, but it would be like, it would be going nuts. Yeah. And, like it would be like... <laughs> <laughs> like you get battered. <laughs> yeah, like you are like... It could kill you. You are knocked clean out. Uh. So it could kill you if it wanted to. But it'd be, it'd be sick. No, it wouldn't. Yeah, it How would it kill you? What's it going to do? They're you. so powerful. Eat you. They can swim at like 40 miles an hour. All right, so but if it's it that big. If it can't... It's like the size of the table and it's going... Oh, well, I'm sorry everyone went to the Caribbean as children, apparently, and saw a big tuna. <laughs> let me get... Let me pull up. Let me pull up some tuna no, pics. we must stop. <laughs> <laughs> this has been a great pod. I'm loving this. Um, compared can you get to, the scale? Yeah, I'm going for the man. Scale of yeah, it, yeah, the human being comparison. Yeah. There's also Google suggested tuna compared to human compared to salmon. So I'm going to try and get all of those next <laughs> to each other because it will really inform our discussion. I'll send it to Sean and uh, Sean and Laura as well so that we can get this get this in the edit. Oh no, that's not right. Well, audibly. <laughs> <laughs> that's gone wrong. Mm. When did okay, you learn there's, you a, there's, a, there's a photo of a tuna and a, and a man underwater together. I think that one's better. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, get, I'll get a scale drawing. Sorry. And then we'll finish the podcast. This is insane. Can you get it kind of so it's like the tuna, the man, the Empire State Building? Like that. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't really see the scale between the tuna yeah. and the man. <laughs> This this has a dead tuna in it, Ed. Will you be able to look at it? No, I think I'd rather not. How how are you walking down like the tinned food aisle? Do you oh, like because it's in tins? Sw- sweating. Either. Yeah, but that's a particularly sweating. large tuna, isn't it? That's yeah, no, not, obviously um, these are like record breakers. Yeah, but you can't show me the record breaker, can you? Because then I could show you, sure you like the medium. That's that's giving me no sense of what's going to be in the jacuzzi with Ed. <laughs> okay, here we go. Yeah, so the average size of a tuna. Oh, look at that. Maximum, maximum. Yeah. Okay, but average one point five meters, which so, is about the length of a human. Yeah. So the average Atlantic and Pacific bluefin tuna is one and a half meters. So roughly the same size as you. I feel a bit taller than that. <laughs> <laughs> so you could take it. Maximum length three meters. Say its Twice mouth is size. taped together. Then would you be all right with it? No, no, because I, I think the tail is the most dangerous part. I think that like flipping around, like you catch that in the face, out cold. But you could stand up in the jacuzzi and then the tail isn't near your face. That is the option. But it's lengthways. Well, it doesn't stand up on its mouth, yeah, exactly. does it? But there's no room. <laughs> there's no room. It's not like out the jacuzzi. It couldn't breathe. <laughs> you could empty the jacuzzi and then it would slowly starve itself of oxygen. Do you think I could sell bath water for me in a tuna? Like that, the streamer did. Get in touch. 
<laughs> if podcast you listeners. If just one of you would like it, then we'll make it happen. If you're interested, we can stream it. <laughs> we can put him in a jacuzzi. Like I think a, we start... Like one of those NPC TikTok I think streams. we start with, um, like, bigger receptacles. So it, like, it starts with, like, an Olympic pool. That you and the tuna are just like swimming about. I think that's, I think that's worse. Being <laughs> chased. <laughs> what? And then it gets smaller and smaller until he's in like yeah. one of those champagne flutes yeah. that people dance yeah, yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like Dita Von Tees or whatever. Yeah, yeah exactly. You pull the cord and a uh -huh. salmon just falls on it. <laughs> One of those um, cold freezer baths. <laughs> we like yeah. shut the door on him. Yeah, nice. <laughs> like yeah. a dunk tank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a plunge pool. Yeah, yeah, oh my in. god, that's such a good idea. <laughs> oh, fundraiser. You have to, yeah. You have to answer like three questions, and if you get them wrong, we. Uh, there was that like CBBC show, wasn't there? Where it was like you got like gunged if you got it. It was like a game show, right? Oh, um, but there's a there's a full get your, size. Get your own back. Get your own back. Yeah, but there's a full size Atlantic tuna just swimming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure you get to sign off for that on television. <laughs> Shall we stop? Yeah. Yeah. So. Good. That was a podcast. Thank you very much for listening. See you on the next one.